light's beeping. It's got a red dot. The light's beeping, so. Okay. Right? Is it on? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just the audio quality on that before. Okay, the following, I've always heard it where meetings being recorded, if you go to Southern County's YouTube channel in the near future. Uh, there's no cause for public hearing, bullet discussion, CARES Act, and that will be the bulk of today's meeting. Uh, commissioners Durbin and Eccleston work together on a small business grant program, and uh, some of the details have now been ironed out, and they have presented us with this uh, extensive document full of appendices and an excellent taxonomy. <laughs> I love taxonomy. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would be lying if I didn't say that that was on purpose just for you, though. That was our gift to you. I could tell. <laughs> I was like, nothing like numbers with dots behind it. Make them tickle them fancy. The index is like four pages. Yep. Yeah, it pleases me greatly. All right. I love that you're using the yeah. dot ones and dot twos. Yeah, this is not only a great program, but it can also be used by insomniacs who don't respond well with strong drugs. <laughs> All right, and uh, associated with that document, um, they've prepared a PowerPoint presentation, which is before us. So I'll turn it over to Commissioner Eggleston to present this document. So uh, before we get into just the presentation, I thought that it would be um, good if um, Commissioner Durbin wanted to just give a summary of the process of reviewing the, um, the various applications and other programs. That Sure, I think, I think part of um, what was needed is that we were given the CARES Act funding without any infrastructure as it relates to um, how we uh, get the money to uh, businesses in the community and others, nonprofits, and, uh, and not any specific guidelines um, as it relates to the grant. So we uh, hired ZNA to work with us to make sure that we have parameters in place which would match the CARES program and funding and would ensure us getting uh, funding to businesses. Uh, thinking through businesses and making sure that we were also using them as this money as a uh, vehicle to help them apply for funding. We put into place two little separate elements, one of which is, um, I use the word right, <laughs> a business liaison agency that would actually help them apply for the funds and complete the application. And then also a FLA, a finance liaison agency, which would um, review the application, make sure all the elements are there and then put it in a spreadsheet that is uh, usable by the commissioners. With that, I'll hand it over to you, Jeff, to talk a little bit about the details. Very good. So, um, the, the, the county was authorized to receive $3.5 million from the CARES money. Um, this is part of the state's, the money that the state got from the federal government. Um, this is in a block grant, and as Commissioner Durbin had stated, there, there, there weren't a lot of strings related to it, but they were very clear strings related to, that it had to be related to COVID-related um, expenses. One of their big focuses was a business grant program. Um, there were several, but that was a big one. So that's kind of why we focused, that's one of the reasons why we focused on this, but the, certainly the commissioners main priority with this was to try to help put this money into the economy as quickly as possible, help businesses that have been struggling as a result of the very shutdown orders and changes. So the application process is very simple or it's going to be very simple. Um, so business applicant, there's going to be a single application that will be online. All um, information will go through that single application. Um, there will be links to it on the county website and then various other websites, but it, but it will be independent of the county website. And then, as uh, Commissioner Durbin had stated, you know, there's the business liaison agency and the financial review agency. 
They will both work in conjunction with each other in order to review the applications um, from the various businesses and we'll go over the, the parameters of what it means to be eligible to the program in a minute. Um, and then they will basically create a summary document that will go over their recommendations based on the parameters that will be brought to a commissioner's public meeting and then the commissioners will vote on it. So it's a very simple process from that standpoint. Oh, and uh, the, the first, the way we're going to set this up is the first grant window is going to be August 17th uh, at 8 a.m. and it's going to end on Friday, August 28th at 4.30 p.m. So that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, so again, I think we would urge all businesses and nonprofits to begin gathering information um, to, sh to state their, um, to show their loss or their expense related to COVID. So um, the business liaison agency, um, as Commissioner Dermot had stated, is, is basically going to be the main uh, focus of the application. They're going to be working with the businesses to make sure that they understand how to fill out their application, um, share information with them. They will also be part of the review process. Want to go to the next one? And then the financial review agency is is financial only. They'll have no contact with the businesses. They're there to uh, use their financial background to review the documents to determine if if the, the person can demonstrate a loss. Uh, I, I put this slide in the, the next slide. Uh, that's. For just to talk about this RFP process, so we're, it's going to be a very short window. Uh, basically, the next week we're going to be um, sending information out to financial agencies and to business uh, liaison agencies. We'll also make the RFPs available on the website tomorrow, so that um, uh, so that people can review them over the course of the week. And basically, this RFP process is to get proposals from different entities that would want to be involved in this program in those two capacities. And then we'll be reviewing um, the proposals next Monday with the intention of hiring, uh, having contracts and hiring people next Wednesday. So that's how fast this whole thing's going to move. Uh, so then to go back to the applicant eligibility piece, um, and. Uh, Commissioner Durbin, would you like to discuss your perspective on uh, trying to create an open process to allow uh, as many businesses to benefit from this program as possible? Your perspective on the philosophy when you were reviewing the well, I think what we have what we have put modeled into the program summary is uh, three grant rounds. Is that what you mean, Jeff? Well, I mean, when we were, we were reviewing all these different applications from different places because you have the state programs, the federal programs, and that was what was kind of used to as the boilerplate for what's been done here. So there's a philosophy behind that as far as who should be eligible, what level of eligibility they should have. Right. And, and we use both of those uh, grant applications. Jeff and I came up with uh, this, this consolidated application. What, part of it was through the Small Business Association, and then part of it related specifically to the parameters associated, associated with the CARES Act funding. Um, yeah, and the idea being that we really wanted to, we didn't want it to be too complicated for businesses right. so that they, that they could very simply um, apply and, and have an opportunity to receive money. And so. I think part of that was, you know, as we were looking at this application and needing financial documents from community businesses, we recognize that there are a lot of small businesses here, and so to require specific parameters like three years of tax returns uh, might have been somewhat limiting to smaller businesses or audited financials. So we try to create the flexibility in the application itself in which you could use the various sundry uh, sort of documents that could prove you were harmed by COVID and that the uh, monies being applied for were unbudgeted. Very good. That's exactly, <laughs> I wasn't quite that's sure exactly the response I was, like, <laughs> I was looking for. So um, 
So the, the fundamental eligibility requirements It's been are, so long, I forgot. There you go. <laughs> so uh, the, the business must be licensed and operating in the county. It must be a county-owned business or a county-operated business. Um, it must operate from a physical location in the county. Um, the business must employ 100 people or less. Um, and it's important to note that this is for businesses and nonprofits. It's not just for businesses. So, um, in a nonprofit organization, it, by by this um, by the definition of the law, is any 501c3 or any 501c19. Just to make sure I get that one right. Yeah, 501c19. So you have to be a 501c3 or 501c19, and that's the federal regs. So uh, for, for businesses, you have to have 100 employees or less. For nonprofits, you have to have 500 people or less. For tourism-related businesses, and this is one of the things, again, that's tied in with the federal regs, you can have 500 people or less, but you have to demonstrate why you're a tourism-related business. Um, you must have been in operation on February 15, 2020 and be able to demonstrate taxable income generated in the year prior to February 15, 2020. Um, and then basically the biggest piece of it is being able to demonstrate uh, via any means that the organization covered it, suffered a COVID-related loss or expense. And this is a very broad um, thing um, in, in the policy doc. There are a variety of elements that, that, that a business or a nonprofit could produce in order to show that. Um, as an example, if somebody has one annual fundraiser, they, they get 90% of their income from, and they can't hold that fundraiser because of the restrictions. They, if they can demonstrate, like the past two years, that they got X amount of dollars, and this year they got nothing or they got a little bit, they can apply for the, the balance of that and get that money through a grant. So, um, you know, so that, I, I, I state that because just to make it clear to everybody that this is a very open process, so people should try to, to, to uh, try to apply. And then uh, they, they have to be in compliance with the relevant laws and orders of, of the state. And then uh, finally, the, no owner of the business that has more than a 20% share essentially can be um, on probation, on parole, incarcerated, you know, that kind of thing. We just want to, I don't want to get any Frank Geiger application, well, <laughs> off the record, <laughs> sorry. I should have said that. Yeah. <laughs> but like, but, but uh, I can't stop sticking my foot in my mouth. Um, so, uh, and then the grant formula, basically the first round is going to be a million dollars, the second round is going to be a half a million, and the third, uh, another half a million. Um, the first round, which again is going to take place at, in the end of August, and then the money would be um, uh, released at the beginning of September. Um, the formula essentially is going to be the aggregate of all of the, or the total of all of the demonstrated losses pooled together and then compared to the million dollars. Um, and then that determines the percentage of what everybody will get. So the example that's given here is that uh, if the total loss of all of the businesses and nonprofits that apply is 1.25 million versus the million that's available, everybody would get 80% of what they, what the recommended um, um, damages or expense. So a business that had a hundred, a demonstrated loss of $100,000 in that scenario would get $80,000 grant. So, and, and the goal again was to make it as, um, you know, to try to address that, those losses as, as as much as possible through this grant process. And I think that's something that we're, um, we've established those parameters, but it also is a little more of a wait and see what type of losses uh, we're 
going to see from the community. You know, if if the recorded losses in the first round is eight hundred thousand, then you know, um, and all the businesses have applied that could apply, then they'll all be made whole. Um, mm -hmm. But we suspect that the first round is just. Um, illustration alluded to it being larger than the dollar amount that's available. There's a question. Um, when figuring out that number of the total losses, uh, when they when you're factoring that in, does it subtract off of the loss um, this uh, expenses that also doesn't happen? So if I'm by way of example if I'm a restaurant, I can demonstrate that my sales on all food sales or something is down, say, or let's say alcohol for a bar. Um, I can show that alcohol sales are significantly down over year over year, the month of whatever, April. But simultaneously, my expenses related to buying alcohol right now is down as well. Are you subtracting the cost of the alcohol off of that? It, it would work that way. I mean, I think the financial review agencies will look at both sides of the equation. Because not all businesses, some businesses have variable and fixed costs. Some businesses are totally variable. Some businesses are pretty much fixed. So, right. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah and, and again, the, the, I mean, to some degree, we're putting the um, responsibility on the business itself to demonstrate. Right. So. Uh, you know, the, we'll have information right out of the gate that says if you try to falsify documents or whatever, we're not responsible for that. We're going to review what you provide, and if, if uh, the, the agencies feel based on the parameters that it fits, you'll, you'll probably get something. Do you have any sense of when round two would be? So the, 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 this policy document lays out a schedule. Um, um, is that in your PowerPoint, Jeff? It isn't. I, I, I didn't add it because um, I, I was going to, I still have to type that last appendices with the, with the schedule that's in here. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, the first schedule, the, the first grant round, the, the window to apply will be in August. Um, and these just kind of build on each other. So the second round in here would be in September, at the end of September. And then the third round would be um, at the end of October with the reward in November. So um, each round will have a review after the, the round is complete. So the commissioners, um, the BLA, and the um, FRA will all meet and, uh, and review the process and then determine what the parameters are for the second round. So the second round hasn't been decided yet, how, what the parameters will be for the application. And that, again, the, the kind of the reason for doing multiple rounds is to see how the first one goes. Um, if there's a huge amount of um, response, and say, say the loss is $2 million, we would, we would then say, okay, um, we're good. <laughs> you know, we'll probably continue with the next couple of rounds and, and, and you know, try to address that as best we can. If there are very few applicants and there's very little de demonstrated loss, the assumption would be that either businesses are afraid to apply or this, the restrictions are too great or um, maybe there's some other work that we need to do to help them apply. So, so originally we, uh, based on the recommendation from the previous state of Fed, we were, we were not allowed to give any of these funds to PPP recipients or any other recipients of federal um, funds, then that was lifted. Um, but originally, I think we said there would be some priority for people that had not received any assistance so far. Is that still the case? Yeah, so, so people yes. that have received those types of assistance already um, definitely should apply. Um, the, the priority certainly will give, be given the first uh, priority will be given to people who have received no assistance um, from the federal government. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, next question. If somebody applies like in the first round, 
and they didn't get what they feel they should have gotten, can they reapply? Absolutely, yeah. So the, uh, you can apply for every round, um, and, and you might not get anything the first round. Right. You can definitely still potentially get some in the second and the okay. third round. I mean, that's part of the, the whole process, too, is, is um, that's why, well, that's why too we didn't do like a minimum and a maximum mm -hmm. grant because um, you know there are the, the the other kind of issue with the regulations that we found is is you can't get more than your demonstrated loss. Right. So you you know like if you only have a demonstrated loss of like eight hundred dollars and you get like say a minimum grant of five thousand, um, how is that fair when there's somebody else who has way more, maybe they don't get as much because we're giving everybody $5,000 grants. Well, if they include in the first round, they can apply for the second yeah. round, possibly. Yeah. Um, no. The other thing is that the three rounds were kind of designed because we weren't sure if businesses could have the information needed and apply quickly yeah. for the first round. Right. If, if, if we get feedback uh, from the independent entities that we're working mm -hmm. with, that the community has been served and that the businesses that uh, could apply, have applied, we would probably revisit the first, second, third round, uh, but that was why it was designed in that manner. Other questions? Well, the, the only thing that we didn't include in this that I guess I would set on the table as a question is, um, if someone was going to make a COVID-related expense, like now, which, you know what I mean? Like, or, or this based on the grant? I guess we'd have to rewrite everything. Yeah, I forget it. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, this is our policy yeah. program summary, so I think if we find ourselves in a situation where we have to modify it because it's not working, or yeah. because there's some other considerations that well, you're thinking about? I was just saying, like, there's people that I know where they're like, okay, um, I wasn't going to do this, but now with COVID, I'm going to expand the space. Right. It would be easier for me to do that if I got a grant for it. Right. Like, and if they, I see if they could, then the only problem with that is that they 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 don't have the invoices in hand. Right. And we haven't written that into this right. to do yeah. so. We have it. It looks like it, if you don't mind me projecting, I would I would say let's do that round two if there's a need. Yep. And first priority is essentially to help businesses recover some of those annual drops. Yep. Um, expansion and stuff. Okay. If we have money. No, well, that sounds good. Any other questions? Anything else to add then before we move on? I think that's plenty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on. A lot going on. Yeah. Alright. So. Uh, then on to, let's see, new items that are done, policies and procedures. Um, I'm still bringing stuff up for about the next meeting. So it's not topic for today. Project wise, uh, let's see. Um, that was a big project. Yeah, that's a huge project. <laughs> yeah. That's all those small business program summary policies, procedures. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see it get going. Me too. Like Very much more so. More information that's gotten out, the more calls that we're getting and mm -hmm. stuff. And when I describe the program to people, they're super excited about it, about the possibility because there've been so many of them have been hit up so hard, and they haven't had any good news in a while. Mm -hmm. So I think it will provide some good news. So project wise, from from my projects, um, no update on free trial looks. Do we have a clear back from the CCD about the free trial grant program? No. No? Okay, we're still waiting on that, so no further. No, 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 no. Uh, EMS cooperative wise, um, things are going pretty well. There's a cooperation between uh, Clarendon, Sherry Grove, and Sheffield that is going quite well. Um, the iron responding has been well received by the fire departments, and I've had several think. Uh, us, uh, so we're doing that. B25 radio cutover um, can certainly be measured in days at this point. We are very close. I don't have an exact date for you, but it could be as early as next Tuesday. Um, coop plan. I got a quote from uh, Mike McGrady at MCM Consulting in order to update our continuity of uh, government operations plan. It's something 
that we have had a few false starts over the last five years to update because the one that we have is significantly out of date. Um, and uh, they have been, as a result of COVID-19, doing quite a few coop plan updates around the, the counties around us. And um, uh, I think they did the right organization to do it. We've hired them for most of our plans of the hazard mitigation plan they're currently working on. Um, they did give me a quote and uh, it seemed a touch expensive, but maybe worth it. Costs are we going to have at the yeah. county level that are not going to get 
um, funded. And that's where uh, my concern is. Right. Uh, whether we do single county or multiple counties, and then secondly, we all we I want to partner with counties that are mo most like us, right. like size, like business, those types of things. So I guess that would be more my concern than anything else. And while it would be helpful to have a regional department of health during this pandemic, uh, the question is in in years when we don't, how much do we benefit from that? Yeah, and I always see a role for the, their existence, but here's the my one point that I agree with you on the, the, the concern about ongoing costs, mm -hmm. because um, the one mandate that you actually do have as a department, to have a department of health is to basically have a, a one full-time person with a master's degree in public health. And so that can be shared regionally, but if we did it on our own, that would be a significant cost to bear long-term. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that I think that there are. I mean, certainly there would be a cost that we would have to incur. I think my thing is, is again, you want to bake um, different responsibilities and, and things that they can do, you know, on an annual basis, regardless of the existence of a pandemic. Right. Because um, I just think, like, just as an example, like the effort to try to like coordinate some kind of regional tele telemedicine mm -hmm. initiative. Um, for any of our directors or individuals, it's really hard to get the time together to meet with all the agencies and put it together as a group. And what happens is, is you have two or three nonprofit entities that end up either competing with each other or not collaborating or duplicating efforts. You know, and it seems like that's something that, is, like an entity like that, could help coordinate. You know, like, but I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out there. Yep. Yeah. Like, does, like, Does it change parents? our funding if we have a Department of Health? Does it get covered by the common law? I don't believe so. Okay. How does Erie, Erie's Department of Health is covered by county taxes? Well, their revenues, remember I said uh, that I wouldn't necessarily want to get into doing restaurant inspections and that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. They get their revenue to offset based on things like that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, hypothetically, that's something else you do is contract with the municipalities and stuff, you know, to do inspections and yeah. stuff like that. Health inspections. I mean, I don't know if that's... I mean, because honestly, on, on some level... Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, if you want to fund that agency, yeah, this, like, they have to do them anyway. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. Like somebody's gonna do them. Would you rather have our person or the state? <laughs> like, you know, it depends. <laughs> it totally depends. <laughs> I mean, I will say the one guy that came into the weenie wagon, he was super nice. <laughs> was he? Yeah. Uh, yes, he did we have to respect you again, Jim? He did. He tested my weenies and they were. <laughs> there you go. Well, Had to right. have it at the right temperature. It's been. This has been a good conversation. <laughs> So I'm not totally committed to doing this at this point, but I am still intrigued enough to continue exploring it. So I, I think I will reach out to the other counties and see what they think, and then uh, try to delve in a little bit more on exactly what functions could be, um, what's necessary, what's not, and, uh, mm -hmm. and what kind of revenue offsets they would be. Um, and I'm trying to balance this because the main reason I think I want to do this is mostly because I've been so annoyed with the Pennsylvania Department of Health and their lack of communication with us um, over uh, everything from orders to reporting. I mean, we find out after, we find out the same way as you know, the general public does about the numbers and such. So we start getting hammered with questions that we can't answer because we're the last part of people to know. Like, stuff like that is what I want to fix. My question is, is it really going to cost, is it, is the cost benefit really going to pan out? And I don't have the answer to that question yet, really. Uh, but I still feel interested in exploring it. And the other thing is, if you only need one full time person, which is great, and that's all you have, you're still only, you know, one bench seat deep. Yeah. And obviously, in the pandemic, you can manage your staff and such, but. Right. Well, on the flip side of it, I mean, that's what we have now. Like, so with no control, with no input. Right, right, going. right. We don't yeah. do that. You know, <laughs> it's I mean, true. Uh, One is better than zero. Yeah. I mean, I, I always 
always look at it like I'd rather have us be making the calls than the state. I mean, that's my thing. Yeah. You know, it, but I think I think that's why it's good to just review it and see what everybody's doing too, right. because I think that there's other things that this person could do that would be valuable to the community that would make it worthwhile, aside from just the pandemic response. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, that's it for me on projects and fire station. You. Well, I guess the thing that comes to the top of my mind is just the broadband task force. Um, so we got, had our first meeting, uh, which was valuable, I think, to the individuals that were on the call and just some information sharing um, regarding uh, where we have access to broadband today versus areas that we don't. and then. Of course, hearing a little bit from Youngsville TV and what their thoughts or plan are to continue forward in their efforts to explore and to um, continue uh, advancing broadband in the county. And then other things, we have a, uh, Eric and I, and I don't know if you guys are intending to listen to the proposals uh, for our pension uh, broker, so that's going on this week. Well, okay. As far as meetings go, I'll have them and I'll be in and out. <laughs> <laughs> there won't be many. <laughs> yeah, I guess we oh, I week. do too this week. This week I'm going to try to spend some time with Lisa on the election end of things. Um, we, we have a number of proposals that we've got to bring to the table as soon as possible to um, get everything lined up for the election. Uh, want to, you know, get as much out front of it as we possibly can so that we can coast through November 3rd rather than, uh, you know, have to do damage control. Or... We have a plan for coasting? <laughs> well, no, that's what we put together. It's the, it's the Lisa low blood pressure uh, plan. Okay. Yeah. So I think that with the, the CARES Act money, and some of the other funding streams, like we, the goal is going to be to put something together so that we take as much off Lisa's plate as possible, um, make her position strategic, you know, have people that are doing reporting on stuff that's, you know, in case there is errors or issues with the machines and some of the other stuff, and, um, and all that. And then also so that our hands are as much off of it as humanly possible, so that I don't have to hear the, you know, the, the whatever, I'll believe it that. <clears throat> and then um, we put our blight grant in last week, so we're going to cross the fingers on that. That was another, that was a good, a good uh, learning experience. So I, I, you know, I put it in through the system, like I did all, put all the stuff in and everything. Because I want to learn how to do it, so that down the line, if I want to write one myself, I can do it. Or, but Lori and I exchanged many phone calls and emails. <laughs> like, you know, last week, and she, she had she had steam coming her out of her ears by the end. So, but it, but it worked out. So, department updates. Um, I'm working on those grants. Last week. Um, I have all the invoices together. I'm just waiting to get copies of checks from Denny so I can turn them in. These are for your unanticipated collection costs is, that are Yeah, this is for the CARES Act and the HAVA and stuff like that. So okay. Good. I'm just waiting. I can't give a huge email of all the checks I need because I have to have proof to be paid and stuff before I can turn them in. But once I get those, then I'm going to get those moving off so we get some reimbursement. Great. Um, with the COVID-19, you know, our accreditation for Pennsylvania got canceled for the VA. So what they're going to do is, uh, starting tomorrow, actually, um, till October 26th, every Tuesday, I will be down for a couple hours doing my accreditation on um, web okay. with them. So um, I'll just probably post it on my door and... Um, Michael will be closed for a couple hours. How are things going? Things are going good. Good. Um, I'm scheduling now, like the 17th of August, for my next next available appointment. Okay. But um, things are going good. I haven't had any complaints. People are working with me because they know. So you're about 
two and a half weeks out. Yeah. So okay. if that starts growing, I think you would want to know, you know, if we've got that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Just yeah, sure but, I, but I make sure everything is done by the end of the month. Um, I've only had to come in here one Saturday just to make sure my VA awards and that were entered. Okay. Um, not only for a couple hours, but um, I felt better because I didn't want to come in five hours behind on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah, that makes it sound good. Okay. Very good. Eric, anything? No. So, do you go to the USDA right now? Yes. <laughs> so, we'll be voting presumably on a resolution about that in the next meeting, but it needs to be turned in today for yet to come. Correct. Correct. So, just general announcement for sending in that USDA grant we've talked about it multiple times, multiple meetings. <laughs> yes. Which USDA grant? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anything more? <laughs> Nothing here. Okay. All right, then we stand adjourned at 12.30.